The mind is so resistant to these ideas about cause and effect. And if we're going to really wake up from littleness to magnitude, you have to have a clear grasp about cause and effect before you can be a miracle worker and number two, accept the atonement and wake up from this dream. You have to have a clear, very clear, concise experience of cause and effect. I'll tell you one thing, most of us were all raised with Newtonian science and Newtonian physics and it's off. It was off. We, we were poorly taught <laughs> in, our, in our classes. Even our scientific method, you know, which had studying the empirical world and, and looking at all the cause-effect relationships in terms of this world. Even physics, we were taught for every action there's, there's a reaction, you know. All of our chemistry, we were taught. All of the things most of us were taught have the underlying belief that there's causes and effects in this world. And basically that's what Newtonian physics was about. It was about studying empirically, studying the world in all kinds of different ways and learning about these cause-effect relationship. Uh, and this touches every single discipline in the world. When you go to university and you study all those different disciplines, uh, you're studying cause-effect relationships is basically what, what they are. And I'm telling you right now, none of them are true. Even, let's say you're, you're maybe not so inclined into, uh, into the physical sciences and so forth, but like, let's say you're a homemaker and you like to bake. There's a lot of false cause-effect relationship in all of your recipes for that apple pie, for that lasagna, for those chocolate chip cookies. That's right, maybe even you're a homemaker and you like to bake and there's a lot of false cause-effect relationships in even baking because it involves temperature and texture, ingredients, mixing, and it, it involves interactions between various types of matter that comes out hopefully into a, a baked product that's not too brown and burnt and not too raw and gooey. You know what I'm talking about. Even if you're not into engineering and vectors and, and stresses like that, from anywhere from homemaking to engineering, we have to get past this whole Newtonian idea that there's causes and effects in the world. So I know I've taught this a lot over the years, but I'm going to do it again because there's no way that you go from littleness to magnitude without getting your cause and effect straight. It's like you've got to know your A, B's and C's and D's. You've, you've, you've got to know your alphabet if you're going to learn grammar. If you want to learn trigonometry, you know, you better have your addition and subtraction down. And if you want to learn calculus, you better have your trigonometry down. You're going nowhere. There are building blocks. And just like in science and just like in mathematics, if you don't have your building blocks clear, then you're not going to be able to be a consistent miracle worker because miracles require a clarity of cause and effect. So first of all, let me give you, uh, I always talk about false cause-effect relationships and spurious cause-effect relationship. Let me give you a, an actual factual cause-effect relationship. You know, this is really the only one that you ever have to experience to be happy. If you can just get this one cause-effect relationship then you have returned to spirit, you have returned to divine creation, you have returned to eternity. And the basic cause and effect relationship is God is the cause, Christ is the effect. Okay, that's it. That's what Jesus meant by the Father and I are one. You know, there was two parts to the statement, the Father and I are one, the Creator and the creation. Christ is, is an effect of God. I am as God created me is a, is a beautiful statement of a perfect cause-effect relationship that's actually real and actually true. But 
There are so many religions, so many spiritualities that somehow think that God, love, divine love and light creates matter. And matter doesn't come from spirit. We have to say that again. Matter doesn't come from spirit. Spirit creates like itself. Matter is too dense. Matter could never be spirit because it's absolutely too, too dense. Matter is changing. Spirit does not change. Spirit is changeless. You don't get the changing from the changeless. You don't get the finite from the eternal. You don't get spirit from matter. And so when you look at this world of perception of time and space and the whole cosmos, if you want to really understand magnitude, if you want to be of good cheer and overcome the world as Christ Jesus spoke, if you want to have no fear because love is all there is and you understand the true divine relationship of creation and love is all there is, then, then that's what magnitude really is. Now, in terms of this world, let me go back and talk about how the ego seemed to make this world. This world is the belief that cause and effect are separate. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. He never said, I and the Father are separate. He said, I and the Father are one. One. One spirit. One love. One. One, one, one. That's what creation is about. It's about oneness. It's not about division. And basically even saying things like if, you, if you've seen the Son, you've seen the Father. Basically, if you understand the oneness of the Christ, then you understand the oneness of, of God. Because they are one, they're inseparable. You can't have one without the other. You know, Christ and God, Christ and God. You know, it's one, one, one. This is what it's all about. So the belief in separation was the belief that the, the creation or the Christ could leave the Creator. That's impossible. It's impossible for the creation to leave the Creator. But the belief that that's possible is the belief that effect can leave the cause. And if effect could leave the cause and make up its own identity, not be as God created it, but, but separate from God, that's what this whole time-space cosmos, that's what littleness is about. That's what individuality is about. That's what autonomy is about. It's all about the belief in separation. Separation, that the effect can leave the cause. And clearly that is not possible. Cause and effect are together. They have a, an eternal dance. God and Christ have an eternal dance and there's nothing that ever interrupts that dance. That's a dance that never stops. Because it's a dance of oneness, of, of joy, of happiness, of eternity. It's an eternal dance of gratitude. There's, there is nothing else. That's all that is. When Byron Kate, Katie talks about loving what is, that's what is. I'm telling you right now what the is part is. This is it. Oneness. Oneness.